the balance of nutrients and when we do a soil test we, we're basically asking for what's totally in storage what's in the soil with a heavy it's a very heavy asset that block everything out to find out what's actually naturally there from down there about 600 mil right up to the surface why using our urea and di3 and you know driven by by economic after you established it and then we had to dry time all the time. Yeah. And and uh, and I actually you have not used any irrigation except last Sunday that was the yeah, first run. Yeah, run the irrigation. Nothing on, isn't it? No, not last year. Not last year. Any good? We have a bit of a slideshow in there. Um, Brian Brown and Rachel Ward, mm. the film industry and film player people. Uh, mm. They're using my products through green, green management, you know, um, Mick Green, which, which you know. Even so, and there's there's many other people which I can't recall straight away now, which is using this thing, and they actually go with one phone call, bring up bring an abattoir. This 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 the cost of design straight away to bring an abattoir. And when 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 this fellow is trusting the farm and knowing what's coming from the farm, you don't even have a look at it. You don't have to go to a store. Store sale, you know. Yeah. Steve, is there a notable difference in the cattle in the finished product? Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. the cattle are coming off improved country, are certainly a lot better than what um, you know than what just the normal grass cattle are. And there are people that are yeah aiming for MSA markets and different things that we're doing that are achieving what they want to achieve. Yeah. We're just down at Wingham, obviously, and a lot of you do supply to us, and I know there are beef producers as well as dairy producers here today. So I'll just give you a bit of a brief outline. Wing and Beef Exports is owned by a Japanese company, Nippon Ham, um, and uh, they're a parent company in Japan, and the actual operating company in Australia is uh, Nippon Meat Packers Australia. There's three processing sites in Australia, which is Wingham, which is licensed for 800 head a day, then we've got uh, Thomas Borthwick's at Mackay, which is licensed for 1,000, and we've got another plant at Oakey in Queensland, which is licensed for 1,400 cattle a day. Uh, also own a feedlot at Boala at Texas, which is 50,000 head capacity, and uh, it's been running at capacity for about the last 12 or 18 months. And then we've also got a place at Shelight in Tasmania, which is um, we use for a Wagyu operation that we do. So we do have a pretty fair foothold right over Australia. There's about uh, 2,500 employees across the country. And yeah, Japanese owned, as I said, and uh, they've been here for a long time and they want to be here for a lot longer yet. So one of the programs that we've started in the last uh, 18 months has been an MSA graded program and as Ludwig's probably uh, alluded to there, a big part of that's nutrition. We got, we've got two boxes that we do, which is a Manning Valley box, which is a uh, milk two tooth program from 150 to 350 kilos carcass weight. And then we have uh, another zero to six tooth program, which can be hay street feed treated from uh, 280 to 380 kilos. So the big push for all this has come from probably the supermarkets, both Coles and Woolworths. Woolworths will now not buy any product off us now if, uh, if we don't have it MSA graded and Coles has pretty much gone the same way. So they've been the big pushes and I guess uh, for people that don't know, Meat Standards Australia is a program which MLA launched and it's really the science behind the quality of beef. So it's saying to the housewife, if I buy a, a Scotch fillet today, and it's a three-star product and I cook it according to how it should be cooked. It'll eat the same today as it will tomorrow as what it will next week. 
So it's really just get, trying to guarantee the, uh, the eating quality of the product that we have. Uh, to become MSA registered, you need to do an online exam and uh, an online test. And there's a whole heap of information that you need to understand to, uh, to be able to supply MSA cattle. There's more paperwork to do, which isn't onerous, but there is a little bit more. And then uh, the cattle come down, they're killed. Terry sent cattle down, as he mentioned, for our MSA program. The chiller assessed after they're slaughtered, so that happens the next day on a thing called a data capture unit. So the cattle then are assessed for uh, uh, for Ross of Cape, and uh, there's a whole host of these measurements that are all put into this data capture unit, and then it's printed. Uh, it's, it uh, develops what's called a boning boning room score or a boning room group, and then th that's how we price our cattle off of those boning room groups. So it is quite in depth, and there's a lot of work that goes into the MSA program. But there are some producers in the area that have good results, but you know it's obviously. There's a premium there for the cattle, but they have to come off uh, good, improved country, and I guess that's what Ludwig's trying to to allude to there. But um, you know, we're looking to to grow that segment of our market. You know, we started off we were doing 200 a week. Well, currently we'd be killing about 1,400 of them a week, and uh, we've just started a new line that's going into New York, and the first shipment arrived there yesterday. And those guys really pushing us to uh, to do more and more. And if if it does take off. There'd be the capacity there for us to probably do 12 or 1400 of those alone a week. So the demand's there. Um, it's been a tough year. I'm not going to allude to uh, to anything but it being that way. But I think, you know, as we move into next year, if the weather goes with us a little bit, I think there'll be certainly some rewards there for people. And obviously paying a premium for that product? Yeah, there'd be a 20 cent kilo premium at the moment. Yeah, and if you get right into the top slot, like we had some people yesterday sent some steers to us from Wellington and. Um, they're all milk tooth and they average $1,297 across 165 of them. So for the people that have got the cattle, the rewards are there, but yeah, a lot of it is what goes down their throat. So but yeah, any questions later on or whatever, feel Steve, free to ask. Steve, me. is there something about the handling about stress? Oh yeah, the, you know, stress and all that sort of thing. And that's a lot of the work that goes in when you want to do your registration. There's a whole heap of information there that you need to do, like we and you need to read through all that info. So as you can do your online exam and then you get an MSA registration number and you're away. So, so is there a correlation between say, if the cattle never been really yarded very much and, and the cattle oh. are basically almost wild and if the yep. truck comes, there will be such a stress? Yeah, that's right. Like Anything like that would end up a dark cutter and they wouldn't be eligible for the program. So then they'd fall out and just go back to our normal grass price. Interesting. The, mm. the stress caused the dark cutter. Yeah. Now, we. Uh, Terry is the calming vitamin, is the contentness vitamin. Like, I talk, explained this to a lady because in the horse mineral plus, which is not a rumen, we put the mineral plus in uh, the vitamin B12 in actually because the horses can't develop it. He, he persists that every six weeks he wants to have his cattle yarded and check and wait it to keep con 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 control of what's going on. And he said to me, Oh, I said, I mean, this hard work, this hard labor. I mean, this is this is bloody tough. I wouldn't like to do it. And he said, "Now, nah, Ludwig, they get used to it. They're just happy to come, and and we put them through. And if they need a bit more, as your mineral plus, we give them a bit more of something else." Ludwig, and excuse me. Can you tell? Yesterday you came to visit my place, and tell them how the grapes looked on one plant. Yeah, it was Micro and Ludwig was a grape grower. I was growing grapes for the Castle Grain, you know, the biodynamic mini after 15 years. And, um, and, and, and plants so healthy. He used uh, FCMP in Formula One. I have about 80 grapes that big on one plant. And we got more of them, but yeah. that's how big they are. But the, the Mineral Plus is another tool on top of, of the foundation. The foundation for me is, of course, a soil test. Is balancing if you need lime, uh, dolomite, FCMP, Formula One, the microbes, the biology, and then the mineral supplement as well. Just like the icing on the cake. And cattle become very glossy and, and shiny. No? That's what you want, isn't it? Shiny, glossy cattle. Yeah, healthy. Like with horses, isn't it? Yeah. We should take it ourselves, you know? Yeah. We're trying to stay skinny, not get fat. <laughs> This is another problem because yeah, I don't know what's going on because here. That, me too, because we, we would digest better, you know. <laughs> and yeah, we might wind it up and head into the shop. We got a, we got a um, slideshow for Ludwig to run and a bit more information. We got we're going to give you a steak sandwich and a drink for coming. Um, from the co-op's perspective, obviously we want to sell the product. That's that's the motive. To do that, 
we will need to work with you because it's a product that comes in lumps and we'll need to plan it. It's a deadline today basically. Yeah, yeah. we're on a deadline at the moment and we will forward buy some product in anticipation you're going to believe what Ludwig's telling us. But, uh, <laughs> and, and, and check me out on the website, really yeah. go on this website, you know. Um, we sell a fair bit of the product anyway, like there's, there's a few farmers that are onto it and a few guys try it and they're all pretty happy and they keep come, by, come back and buy it. So we, it's not going to be a product you'll turn up and we'll have 20 tonne of urea, like urea, sitting there. So we do need to know if you're going to start a soil test and a program, and obviously you'll do that with Ludwig, and then we, we need to plan what you're doing and when you're doing it. And remember, you had this long, long kakuyu grass. You got 300 hectares or acres, I can't remember now. Hectares. So he said to me basically, Ludwig, the margins are not there to have somebody sitting on a tractor weeks and weeks and weeks and mulching and slashing, you know? So actually, his kakuyu grass got higher, isn't it? And they nibbled always the fresh stuff on top, but it was so, such a big thing. And we put on, and I thought really we had problems, isn't it? We thought we had to mulch it down with a lot of horsepower and then maybe put spray something on to digest it or burn it or something, you know. And uh, we, you put on FCMP in Formula One, and what, what happened every time the cows grazed, they took a bit more of the old stuff too, isn't it? And when past renovation came, we just had enough to actually proceed to cover the seed, just, isn't it? And all the sets you have, remember the sets? They're calling it sets, it must come from, from New Zealand or something, sets, you know? This, 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 this very fine, you know, the cow shit and, and the fiber and, and the fine roots sitting there uh, and it's like an impermeable, like a felt. All disappeared, isn't it? Then we use Mineral Plus as well in the cattle. And I think your, your protein levels and fat levels and, and milk production and the cattle will become more content, isn't it? We've got a few tonne there, two of them, and we've got more to come in this year. Yeah. I love you as I loved you when you were small.